It's fire cat. All right, so new products this week. Uh, standoffs. First up. Just like we said. First up, we do have standoffs. Um, this is our first new product. And these are 16 millimeter tall standoffs. We have um, like 13 millimeter tall ones, or maybe 12, I don't remember the exact number already. Oh. These are a little taller, and these are specifically for use with the Pi TFT. So um, the Pi TFTs are a little taller. Next one. Um, yeah. They're a little taller than hats, because they have, you can see that there's like, there's like this extra tall socket header with like two extra little bumpy things. So this lets you attach the Pi TFT very solidly to your Raspberry Pi 2. So if you go to the overhead, I can just show them really fast. All right. I got this. Yeah, so these are the standoffs and like they come in a bag of two and you get um, two hex nuts as well. And then when you um, attach them, they make it so it's like really solid. So you have like this very nice attachment and you can attach them from the bottom or this just, you know, provides sort of an extra um, measure of security. So, you know, it's a good thing. Add more security to your Pi TFTs. So that's why we have those 16 millimeter standoffs. Okay. Okay, I just want to point out someone else does spider cat in the chat. They do this to their cat and they sing spider cat. And then Tony said, Carmen, his cat would not tolerate, tolerate spider cat. Carmen does, only wants to sit in a box. I can yeah. tell that this cat is just like, do not just like let yeah. me sit in the box. I just want to point out, as, uh, we're, I'm not the only one who does spider cat. But people do the worst. <laughs> like you said, like everyone does the worst things to the cat and they just don't talk no, about it. No, there's not the worst. It's very kind. Okay. Okay. You do it for your own entertainment. And the MOSFET isn't asking for it. Next up is the Omnivesa from Pimer Running. This is a little plastic cutout that is designed to allow um, attaching a Raspberry Pi, especially one that comes in a, a Pi Moroni case, onto uh, the back of a monitor. So it looks like this. Comes with all these little attachment nobules and like standoffs and screws and thumb screws. So, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you laughing at? You the should... Omnivesa? No, everything's okay. All right. When you're, when you're over over it. Um, there's all these little holes in it so that like depending on the case you have, there's like a lot of different cases that are supported. None of our cases are supported, but we do have our own like little vase amount. But if you have like a Pimeroni um, case, like uh, this little A plus case, which is super cute, um, you can attach it to the back and I even have it on the overhead so you can go to the overhead, I can okay. show it off. So, um, let's see, if, yeah. And then let me lock, okay. Um, so yeah, this is the case, and then the case attaches with these long screws, and then you can use either 100 millimeter or 75 millimeter. So this is like our little monitor that we sell, and now this you can attach the Pi securely to the back. And then we even have these really nice, um, like shorty uh, HDMI cables. So it's kind of perfect because it just like, curls around this way, and then you can just power the uh, the Pi and have it be a little all-in-one monitor. So it's kind of handy little device. Okay, that's it. Um, we got some more products. Yes. Okay. Uh, these ready. Yeah. So these are the um, Explore hats, right? Explore hats from also from Pimeroni. We got a shipment of, of theirs. So that's why you have three new Pimeroni products, and we love their stuff so much. So this is Explore. Can we say hats. like Arg? It's a bounty because they're pirates. Yeah, it's Arg. It's a bounty. Um, so this is Explore hat. So there's two types of Explore hats. One is kind of the more basic Explore hat, and it. Um, I think it has it has like, it's basically a hat and it has um, these headers so you can ha uh, you can attach on the top of Pi and then have a little mini breadboard. It has four capacitive touch buttons or maybe eight capacitive touch buttons and then um, four multicolored LEDs. Uh, it has um, analog inputs. Sorry, that's just the pro. Sorry, ignore that. What I said about the analog inputs. It has um, four inputs, four outputs. Uh, it has this eight capacitive touch buttons, and it has um, driver outputs. So the driver outputs can drive like um, uh, like one simple stepper or uh, solenoids or like a little basic motor, like not a bidirectional, but like just turning it on or off. It can do something like that. And then there's also the Explore Hat Pro, which is a little more expensive. And um, can you go to the next one? Yeah. Um, it's a little more expensive, but oh, sorry, this is still the Explore Hat. So go to this. Okay, this is the Explore Hat Pro. It has a lot, it has a longer strip because it has a lot more um, outputs. 
So the Pro adds um, analog inputs and also adds motor outputs. So it's a little bit more advanced. So you can like actually have it do like robotic stuff. It still has the four LEDs, the capacitive touch buttons, the GPIO, and like a five volt compatible LED um, IO. But uh, in addition, it can also do motor control and analog input. So that's, these are kind of two little ways to add um, basic control. They kind of have a little bit of this like, parallax look to them because they have the, the little teeny breadboard on top. So it reminds you a little bit of the Bobot. So if you're building like little robots and stuff, um, these two hats are very convenient. They plug on top and then you can just use wires and everything's labeled very nicely. So they also have like interface code in Python for these items. Okay. So let's uh, keep moving okay. along here. So yeah, you can just um, skip these. Oh, and they all come with a little breadboard on top. Okay. okay so we have the Thale Logic Pro 16. Or maybe it's a Sele Pro Logic 16. I don't actually. Pro Logic is okay. some software though. And this is. Um, what does it do? This. What does it do? <laughs> it's. Well, we've had the four and the eight. Um, this is the 16. It's a 16 channel uh, logic analyzer that also has a oscilloscope and analog. Um, the oscilloscope with analog input capability. So it's 16 channels, and all of them can do. Uh, digital input, high speed, I think it was um, 100, uh, 500 mega samples per second, 100 megahertz signals, or can do analog signals, uh, plus or minus 10 volts, and I think like 10 megahertz signals, although check the spec page for the exact number. It's basically like digital and analog, so you do like both signals, which is kind of handy, especially if you're doing like mixed signal stuff, or you have like DACs or ADCs, or if you're trying to like check your, your power supply to make sure it isn't drooping when you have a lot of logic switching. Um, so this is a pretty hardcore device. It's got 16 channels of, of input. Uh, it's got their awesome software. Um, it can do, uh, it has protection um, for the inputs. It can do like, I think as low as uh, two volt logic, but also as high as uh, plus or minus 10 volt analog input. Um, there's you, an API. You like it. I like it. I use my Sele 8 all the time. I haven't used the, the Pro 16. This is like the first time I've actually even seen one, but you can see how, oh, let me go back one. You could see here how. You want me to go to this one? Yeah, this one. Um, you can see here how there's analog inputs in the bottom two channels and then digital inputs in the top. And it has decoders. So, like, you can tell it, like, hey, decode SPI or I squared T or serial or UR or RS232 or, like, Canvas or whatever. It has, like, 20 different decoders. And at the same time, you can watch analog signals on other channels. And all channels can be any input. So, it's, it's very multifunctional. I'm not even sure what you could use 16 channels of analog input for to measure. But if you want to, you can. Okay. Maybe good for especially musicians who are doing like analog and digital stuff at the same time. Okay. Would this thing work with like a Raspberry Pi if you wanted to? I don't think that they've ported the software to the Raspberry Pi. I know that it works like with the Ubuntu and Mac and Windows for sure because I know people who've used it, but I don't know if they've actually ported the code over. Okay. Um, we have. But you should uh, ask them. We have a star. And maybe they will. We have a star of the show tonight besides you. It's another Pi TFT. Yay, the Pi TFTs. We are um, adapting all of our Pi TFTs over from the old style um, Pi 1. Wait, hold on. You're, you're clicking with what? your mouse. I'm, 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 I'm still in the you want? Oh, you're setting it up. Yeah. I okay, I don't, I don't know. Really. Maybe I should get the clicker. I should, you want to do the clicker? Like, yeah. Okay. I'm on this thing. Because um, otherwise I'm just like click on this thing and then you're like. Well, usually we talk about it in order, but. No, no, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to intro. Because I have a couple minutes. I'm going to intro it. You should do it every month. It's your show. I did. I spend a lot of time on this. It's your show. Um, so we've, we've taken the, the Pi TFTs that uh, you know and love. Um, and they've worked with the Pi 1, which had the 26-bit connector. But then uh, the Pi B Plus came out. And then the Pi 2 came out. And so we got all the software working on the. Pi, well, for, we had to make sure that it worked on the Pi 2 and the B Plus, and we did. And as soon as that was done, we were ready to release this new version that now, as you can see, has on the left uh, the long 2x20 connector. So it has all the pins connected, and it's shifted down so it's exactly the same size as the Pi. So you can see here, it like, it like lines up. It's like perfect. And it has these little um, break-off tabs. So this is the 3.5-inch version, which has 480 by 320, and it's exactly the same size as the Raspberry Pi, which is really neat. Um, and yeah, you can break off those tabs if you want to be exactly the same size, but those are also handy for, for mounting and stuff. And then there's a 2 by 6, 13, it's a kind of classic Raspberry Pi header on the bottom, so you can have a GPIO cable come out, and you can connect it to like a cobbler or like some other board, like a Gertduino board or some other breakout or a protoplate or whatever. Um, 
and it's this beautiful screen, and you, you can see right now it's uh, in our case on top of the Pi. Uh, it has a touch screen on it. You can like run software, you run Scratch, for example. This is this Scratch is pretty small. Uh, you might want to change the resolution for that. You can have it like down sample. Um, it's also really good for text. Like text is really clear because you have quite a bit of space for it, and uh, it has touch capability. And our software is working really good with it now. So on the Pi 2, you can have um, like resistive touch. Uh, it can do the uh, frame buffer copy that we had the tutorial we talked about earlier in the show. So you can have stuff that's supposed to be, if it's will only display on HDMI, you can have it dynamically copy over to the Pi TFT. So I can show it on the overhead. Yeah, let's do this. So let me zoom in and then can you zoom in? Oh, man. Yeah, I can do things too. Why don't you zoom in? I'm trying to get it to lock. I'm too. Hello. I don't know if it's gonna lock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you zoom in? Well, that's yeah. I mean, that's pretty zoomed in. Oh. No, no. But you have to actually activate it, don't you? What? Like yes. I mean, but what? what okay. What? Yes. So. Um, yeah. You could probably lock it now if you want to try to sneak in there. Yeah. I'm. I'm actually, I have to have it. Uh, I have to have it display like Start X or something. Okay. So I'm going to start up the visual graphic thing and then I'm going to try to lock it on. Oh no, come on. Okay, so um, yeah, this is the touch screen. So now, oh, yes, I got focus lock. Um, so you can open the software, for example. I'm going to run. Uh, Python 3. Um, and you can um, also like scale the display a little bit. Oh. That's blown out. Oh well. Um, hold on, let me close this. Um, but you can run like most X11 apps on it. This screen's kind of large enough that you can actually start to like actually use it as like a word processor or open up a web browser and um, browse the internet on it. It only draws like about 100 milliamps. Um, and it works with SDL as well. So like Pygame is what we suggest if you want to write your own applications for it. And we have some tutorials that actually just went live like yesterday that the Pygame tutorial and more Pygame tutorials coming out. Who did that, Phil B? Uh, no, that was uh, Brennan's tutorial. Brennan? Yeah, because he did the Flask and well, it's cool. going to be live tomorrow maybe. Okay. The Flask so and Brennan, Pygame tutorial. Brennan has one. And then, um, and I did one a while ago, and I think Toy Decola did the, the Freak Show one as well. So I think that for okay. people who want to make little portable things, especially because it's exactly the same size as the Pi, um, it makes for a really great little portable display with 480 by um, 320 pixels. Okay. Yay. Is that everything? That's it. All right, those are the new products. Good work. I was barely helpful. <laughs> You're extremely helpful. You provided just... a great emotional support. Okay.